everybody. It's virtual truck driver diaries time. Clap, 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 clap. How are we all doing today, guys? Or welcome back to another episode. We are proudly supported and are sponsored by Promot. If you want an enhanced map mod experience for Euro Truck Simulator 2, then Promot is the map mod for you. And we are also sponsored by British Haulage Packs. If you Oh yeah, British Haulage Pack supply all the trucks you will see me drive in Virtual Truck Driver Diaries. So if you would like the truck I am driving, whether it's the one now or ones that will undoubtedly be included at some point, then head over there, talk to the team and they will sort you out. Just tell them I sent you. That's all you got to do. But uh, yeah. Right, so you notice one thing, I'm sat forward. That's like, because I can try to see out that side now, nearly. So, it's all a little bit weird for me as well still, so let's just crack on. But, how are you all doing today, guys? Welcome back. It's, oh no, there we go. It's been a long time since I've driven. Obviously, for you, it's a week. For me, it's, it's weird. I obviously left you last episode with it being a couple of days before uh, the race day live, which would be the Daytona 24 hours. I am pleased to say we finished, and not only did we finish, we finished P2 in class, and I think it was 20th overall in the end. So that was mad. Absolutely, it was brilliant. There's um, they'll be up by the time you're watching this, but obviously it's pre-recorded, so. Um, there we go. I will be uploading the stints separately that I did, or the separate recording chunks, because I couldn't leave it on all the time because my equipment was overheating and it just stopped. So it did help, it was really hot as well on Saturday, especially. So, obviously, I streamed in little segments, I'll put them up separately. I've also stitched them all together. I made a 13 hour video. 13 that's one three hours um, that's when I just added all the stream together in one big video so I'll be putting that up as well but uh, yeah the um, the stints will be up on their own individually as well but no I had a lot of fun I really do need to thank my teammates because they were fantastic uh, to Travis Chris and Gordon he pulled some excellent stuff during the night and to James, it was fun leapfrogging me on Saturday afternoon, mate. Really fun. Uh, you did really well. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of all of the team. Unfortunately, car one crashed, which sucks. But um, the King Banner drive out there drove like car, so at least everybody got a stint, I suppose. So that was a bit hard. That was a bit heart wrenching to, to hear. Over here, thank you. A bit heart wrenching to hear that. But I left you with a whetted appetite for something I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, after I recorded this bit, I'm going to go in and change the brake settings. Because this is ridiculous. So yeah, I left you with a whetted appetite about a story involving an Icelandic driver and my little side street. But uh, first I'm going to get on the ferry, I'm going to pour myself a drink and have a drink and we'll get in for story time. And this episode is as long as it is today guys, it's going to be as long as it is because quite frankly I've got nothing else better to do at the moment. But yeah, so, oh yeah, talking about that, just looking over there, reminded me, I have a triple screen set up, but it's not your conventional triple screen set up. So I've got the monitor one, which is what I'm using for gaming and all of that. I've got one directly above it, that's monitor two, we'll call it. Monitor two is up there, to, to obviously be, it was where I was running UBS from and Twitch chats and things like that. But with the success, of the racing at the moment, I've decided to put. I've decided to hook the third one up. 
so that I can, you know, have some extra telemetry running. And Discord. Well, Discord and Twitch chats are going to be on that screen because it's off to the right. So it'll be where the wing mirror is on the truck. Yeah, actually, if you think about the windscreen as my main monitor, that's my second monitor, and that's my third monitor. I don't need to plug it, so I don't need to use it as a light. Um, so yeah, I'm going to the ferry now. It's almost ring. It's just, it's so mad this week with it sinking in that we finished P2. It was, it was insane. Sorry guys. Oh, I've also turned down my mic as well, by the way. Uh, I think you've probably guessed. But yeah, um, one of my fellow co-drivers said that it was too loud. Um, and he was right. Excuse me. Yeah, my fellow driver Chris, he told me that he told me that my microphone was too loud, and I ignored him because I thought I knew best. And I watched, ooh, and I watched the the racing back and realised that he's actually right. So, yeah. All right, you do that then. But yes guys, it's story time, so okay, the music on the go. Pick something new, I did download some new songs. But, let's get on to the Wetted Appetite Iceland Air Cargo story. So, I live on a little side street in the Midlands. And we do get like these conventional seven and a half tunnels, eighteen and a half tunnels coming all the way to the last five. But this road is way too narrow and way too small to fit an Arctic. So our surprise being when this Iceland Air Cargo lorry turned up and he was in a very big one and it caused a lot of trouble. So he Obviously he was stuck, so I went out and talked to him to make sure he was alright. Neighbours were giving him brief and unrepeatable words were said. Um, so I talked to him, made sure he was alright. Made him a drink, he was biscuits and then tea and biscuits wins everybody over. And I was talking and he said, uh, is Manchester Airport around here? You know, because he's seen that East Mid I'm living on East Midlands' um, takeoff. Uh, area so the planes take off five of my house more than likely they do fly all the way but yeah so they don't have to come over my house um, so he's, he's seen the plane climb and he said oh is that Manchester Airport and I said no mate it's East Midlands and he's like really where's Manchester Airport and I was like it's about 40 50 miles north here for here mate why like, what's up he goes Oh, I've got, the, I've got a load on that needed to go from Charles de Gaulle to uh, to Manchester and I said, mate, you've come completely the wrong way, you know, where, where did you originate from? And obviously, I didn't think it's about the fact you said Charles de Gaulle, which would be Paris. And he goes, well, I've come through the river. I was like, mate, you're probably about halfway here. <laughs> He's like, what? Well, but he goes, no, this is the postcode they gave me. It was hilarious because it was actually my next door neighbour's postcode, which is the hilarious bit about it. That's why I came up the street. So I was like, oh, mate, I said, oh, you got a nice wagon, Ludic, New Scania. He said, yes, yeah, so that's 500, but I don't really like it. It's not, it's too fancy. I like the old one. And I was like, oh, okay, what's well, different about it? You know, by this time, he's flicked his taco to have a break, so he's currently on the break. I was talking to him and it was, he said, yeah, I'm 44 tons. I said, what, you're fully laden? He said, uh, he said well, yeah, actually, I am. I was like, okay. He goes, but I'm 40 metres. I am going to reverse out of here. I said, mate, I'll wave you back to the roundabout. So I'm going to do a statement on the bottom, so they put a roundabout in. 
I said, mate, I'll, I'll guide you back to the roundabout. But, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. And then he was saying that he's going from Manchester to Reykjavik and he's staying at home for two weeks. But what was so cool, the thing that was so cool is he was like, oh, I've got an English class one license. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, I, I do a lot of work in the UK. And it's like, and you don't. And I'm thinking to myself, and you don't know where Manchester is. You do a lot of work in the UK. But uh, yeah, so spoke perfect English. Won't right? lie. So if he was English and moved to Iceland, I'd be like, yeah. But uh, poor Blake, he was just in a model completely. I feel for him. He was um, he was alright. Was just upset about my neighbours giving him grief to be truthful. Yeah, so there's no need for it. He's just trying to do his job. So what you couldn't get out to go to have your nails done because there was a big lorry block here, but it's not his fault. You know, he, he's just following the sat now. She was getting proper RA. I was like, don't worry mate, he was, he was getting quite upset that he was upsetting her. I was like, don't worry about it mate, she's, she's like this to everybody. She was normal, I said, yeah you are. Then we go, she's going to go have your nails done, you're going to have your hair done, and then you're probably going to go and get laid and come back and brag about the fact that you got laid to your ex-husband, who's looking after your kids. Oh yeah, I tell him I get laid just to wind him up. And he's just like, hey, fine. Like, but I can't get out, it's like, just wait, oh yeah, you know, for once in your life, think of somebody else. I think he did let me know. And, do you know what I mean, that's what pisses me off the most. She's having her nails done, I'll be in front of you, she can wait a couple of minutes. Do you know what I mean? No, it's not his fault he's lost, he's obviously not English. Because she's just seen a foreign number plate on the street. Oh, that's a Poland driver. No. Apart from the fact his truck's got written on it, Icelandic dream. No, Icelandic nights, sorry, nights as in, you know, daytime, nighttime. This is good. Excuse me. And I seen it, I asked him has he ever seen Arriba Nora, which is the Northern Lights. He said, yeah, I've seen him a couple of times, it's really weird because you look at him in films and on the telly and stuff, and you actually get there and it's so more impressive. I was like, is it really? He's like, yeah. Um, so, obviously, the neighbour's getting IRA. And I was like, I'm not being funny, he's got your postcode to deliver all this to, so where do you want it delivered? She's like, oh, um, 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 obviously, it's not mine. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go back inside and just wait. Just, I'll wait till you've uh, moved. Yeah, he was having a full 45 minute break, it was hilarious. You could see her look, come to the window every five minutes looking if it was still there. And it was hilarious. It was probably, it was, he was up there with one of the funniest days of ever had. Right? She's just so rude, man. I won't lie, I used to fancy her a lot. No. Well, she's, she's grown up and the person who she's become, you know, it's not a person that I wanted to be with. They just went straight on looking at the Bumba plate and went, oh, Poland, Poland, Bulgaria, Hungary. It was just, I felt really bad for him, but he did get on with his day in the end. Yeah. He just looked at it as the fact that he was closer to home than he was to um, not be at home. That was a good way to look at it. 
At least I least I could out good. But uh, yeah, so yeah, we're going to all do what we can do. Just makes you think. Just be nice to all of us. You know, don't have a go at them because they might be having a really bad day just because they don't show the emotions on their face or they keep themselves shy and private, you know. Doesn't give anybody an excuse just to shout out quite really bad racial slurs at people. You know, the poor bloke was devastated, you could tell. But he wasn't going to show it, but you could tell. It's just, no. It's just wrong, I'm sorry. It's you know, I have certain views, certain opinions. I also, I also like, you know, believe in the right for this to have their opinion. But when you start walking into racism, that's that's just crossing the line. Homophobia and racism don't go for me. They don't. You know, people don't deserve it. So what? It's like people having to go at different football fans. At the end of the day, we're all football fans, we all love the same sport. You're just having to go at them because they're wearing a different colour shirt. So what? No, 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 no. Why is it moving out here? I'm gonna move out just in case. I'm not going to push it because I don't know what's going on up here. But everybody's diving out. He's still diving out, don't you? Oh. Ah, junction. Okay. Aha. Oh, well, I'm going to do that cool. But, uh, yeah, so... It's just... I'm sorry, it's things I don't agree with, I'm sorry. Choo choo track. Yes, yeah, so P2 and helped find person. I'll take that any day of the week. They see me coming, they just put their head down and walk faster, so there it is. It's because they know they're in the wrong. Slow down at this juncture to do nothing now.
be leaving Greece, you know, back into Macedonia. So the former Yugoslavia and the Republic of Macedonia. Oh well, the truck's disappeared. Slavian Republic of Macedonia. Not called that anymore, I can't remember what they're called. And break. Look left, look right, look left, look left, look right, look left, look right, look right. It's gonna be one of them episodes guys. Just started warning you. Now. Bitola, 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 Bitola. We're here, sort of. Ooh, flashy light. Ooh, flashy lights. Oh, 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 oh. Get on. No, I'm good. But the train isn't even heavy. Ooh, I forgot to tell you what we got. I don't even know. Oh, sorry guys. But 18 tons of peas on. Yeah, I forgot to tell you. That. I like it when they sign their company like that. Aha! Uh -huh. Here we are again. Where do you want to see this time? Over there. Ah, uh, way it is, it's a blind side of this. In the middle of the night. Oh, stop. Get yeah, enough of an arc on it, I might just pull out here. Yeah. I think I need to. No, 
Alright, let's try the first load of the day then. It was 37 hours and 12 minutes and it was paid at 18 tons. Alright, let's see if these guys have got any droppers on the go. Fancy trip to Bulgaria. Hmm, so look. See, this is the stuff you don't get to see, guys, normally. It's deciding where to go. You know, normally I'm asked to go somewhere, but I get to pick. At A and A, they're not that restricted, just as, um, just as long as I get all in some loads and don't take the mic. They're all treks. <laughs> Far away is awful. Let's have a look first. I said, you know what, guys, we're going to go take a trip to Orchid. If you just give me 30 seconds. Come on, computer. Hey, Aaron, if you're watching this, I'm talking to you about the NFL now. Uh, where do you want to go? Just give me 30 seconds, guys, and just scroll the chat up a minute. Um. Oh, you want to see the Raiders play? I thought you said you was being raided. I was going to say, that made me... I was slightly concerned then, mate. I forgot the Raiders play NFL. So, guys, I'm thinking of going with Aaron to the uh, NFL in London at the end of the year. You know, something I wanted to do for a while, and some Aaron's wanted to do for a while. Plus we can go and have a look at the new Tottenham Stadium whilst we're there as well. Up on the curve. Oh, new scanning is. 
being pulled by a Volvo, how ironic. That is ironic. Yeah, I can put the uh, car that first that first couple of kilometers after you've loaded in your empty. Oh, it's just the best feeling in the world. So if you don't know what them two little yellow logos are, that's to say that the trailer wheel and the midlift axle are raised. So if I lower the truck one now, you'll see that one disappear. And obviously, if I raise it. It comes back and I'm just wasting the load of air so I don't have to break it. There we go. So yeah guys, uh you know. This is the stuff you normally didn't see when I was doing it daily. Oh, but now being a subcontractor it's a lot more flexible, free and hilarious. You know, I'm not saying it wasn't flexible before, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that it's more of a freedom now. It's like I get to drive around in a Ronnie Custer's scanning like, come on, how many people can say that? So, proud and absolutely proud of everybody I've got to know. You know, I'm not saying VTC is a bad, I'm just saying that sometimes you do want a little bit of freedom. I do. I'm having fun with it. You know, yes, I haven't driven as much as I should have. I know the episodes aren't as, you know, as good as they were when I was daily, doing it daily, but... Do you know what I mean? say to anybody don't join a VTC. Join one and stay there for a couple of years. You know, then you'll really like decide whether you like it or not. I stayed at Swift for four and a half years. Um, I was at night for twenty months. So it's you know sometimes it can work out, sometimes it can't just give yourself enough time. Just give yourself time to think and understand what you want to do. Don't make it, don't make any decision on an angry, in an angry mood. You'll come up to regret it. And honestly, if you don't get on with some of the other drivers there, you, you just don't get on with them. You'd just be nice to each other, but don't talk to each other. No, I wouldn't say to anybody, don't ever join a VTC, because, trust me, some of them, but most, you know, the best, the, the most of people I can actually call best friends and brothers I've met at VTCs, whether it's Swift or not, or out in the communities with another. Um, Matt Stones from MSIC, I know him from real life, you know, so... Like I said, I wouldn't say to anybody you don't have to join a VTC, I'm just saying if you do it, go in there with an open mind and give it time to work. Don't don't force anything, just bide your time and just enjoy it. That's all I can say. Uh, somebody asked me that the other day. Actually I might get my Twitter DMs up in a minute and answer some questions. over to the uh, rest stop over it and I'm going to the hotels behind Car 4. What a place to put a sign.
I'll tell you what, this place is really nice. So this is why I'm honoured to be working with Promods and partnered and for them to have a major title name for I say that. You know, it's it is an honour to be working with such a talented bunch of guys and girls. Alright, I'll get to this place. Here's where it comes up saying it's Lidl's. Oh, here. Do not come up my inside. Well, you went to as well. Oh no, it's this way. Ah, I didn't see that. Too late. <laughs> I'm not resting, I'm just looking at jobs. Vidin, Vidin, Belgrade, Belgrade, Campazaro, Salzburg, Zagorzala, Ereti, Milan, Cologne, over London. <sighs> uh, we are going to Italy. Just where in Italy, I have no idea. But I have to drive the way I've just come. Set drive through uh, that place. Alright guys, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna save the game right here. That's like so. I'm gonna turn you guys off for a minute. I am going to message Iron back. I am going to then skip forward the time to see if we get better loads. If we don't, I'll come back and we're gonna go to Italy. So I'll see you in a second. Welcome back friends, we're still in Orchid, but we've got a job. We're gonna to go to somewhere in Serbia, because we all know I like going to Serbia anyway, so might as well just go over there, haven't we? Sorry, I'm just talking about that, man. There we go. So we're gonna pick this load up, and then we're gonna go drive through northern Macedonia, and then we'll be heading through a bollocks, I forgot what country it is. Ah, that's what I had to do when I was off to get the brakes sorted out. Gotta admit though, this place is beautiful. Part of me is thinking about setting up a base down here. Thank you. I think this is empty pallets, I think the load said. So yeah guys, these are the things you don't get to normally see, but just to be truthful, I'm in a good mood and I'm going to do it. Here's empty pallets and I picked them up way too quick. So I'm just used to flicking through the menus quite quickly. Second first way, second way. and I'm doing it this way so I can see the day. There we 
go. Should be fine, I see. That's because I am totally in the wrong bay. <laughs> ah, this is going to be one of them trips. Obviously, guys, I'm not going to do the whole trip all the way like I just did. That's because that one was 250 kilometers. This one won't be. At the moment, whilst I don't know what it is, I'm just going to leave both axles up. I, can't remember, I know it's pallets, I can't remember the weight though. About 22 tons of empty pallets, that means everything's coming down. Let them do that for a minute. And then we'll do that. Put that on for a minute. Alright, it's five o'clock in the morning, the conversation got boring. Alright, so we're going to the same place we went just now, but in Zalar. And it is wrong button. 1,262 k's away. So when I'm normally on a trip, I'm going to whack this open. This is normally just before I go and start recording. So we'll go to Skiop, and I'll say goodbye then. I'll drive through this bit, actually, I might pop in here come down to the second roundabout, come back out, go on a bit of a tour, actually no I can't, and then we're going to go to, Slo oh we're going to Slovansky way, so you can see we came that way through, if you feel, feel, feel hungry, it would kind of feel through hungry, but we're going to go this way, which could be Croatia. More than likely, that's Croatia. Yeah. I'll be heading down to here in Zadar. Which is there. Uh, and it's going to be a tricky reverse, isn't it? Alright, so let's just double check fuel loads. Should be fine. Take a swig of drink. Turn the lights on. So yeah guys, we're looking forward to the um, the next big event for Apicat uh, Racing is the Bathurst 12 hours and that is second weekend in February. I think it's like the ninth, April ninth or something. to Mount Panorama, it's a 12 hour event. It's weird because it starts in the morning and it will finish. It will start pitch black and finish during the day. That's one of the cool things about the Bath first 12 hours. Guys, when the next song starts, I will shall turn it up all of the way. Um, you can enjoy the tuning section, and I'm going to rest my body voice. Obviously, the mic will still be active, you can probably hear things. Um, I do apologise, that's frame rate and drop on mine, sorry guys. Go. 
nice chilly section. Enjoy.
to share and but then I realised that A this episode really isn't that long and B I can just come park here in a minute and come back another day and finish it off to make it even better uh, so this is it for this segment guys and I'll see you in just a quick tickety boo Hello there guys, welcome back, how are you doing? We are cruising through Serbia or Croatia, I'm not too sure. Should have really checked before I pressed the record button, but oh well, I've pressed it now. Um, so yeah, how are we doing? It's actually the next day from when I was filming yesterday. Uh, I needed some sleep, I still need some sleep now. Um, but I've got a bigger issue, I've got something going on with my left eye. Um, it's very sore. Um, but it's actually not the eye itself isn't sore, it's the... You know the, the where the bottom of the... Blinky flap is, I don't know what it's called. It just really, it's it feels like I've got like something stuck there or something. And every so often it'll just nick me and it's like, oh yeah, that hurts actually quite a lot. I've also reprogrammed the brakes, as you can tell. It's still a little bit funny, but all right. No. Oh, yeah. Maybe yeah. Oh, which one's open? That one looks like auto. That one's auto pass. I should have gone through there. Auto pass, remember. The two furthest away are. Oh, it's done. My eyes done it again. The the far right ones are auto pass. Excuse me. So. Over the last few days, there has been some news, and it's pretty big news. So Cardiff City bought a footballer called Emilio Salah from Nantes in France. Plays in Liga 1 with Nantes. Um, Cardiff bought him for a new club record of 15 million, which is like massive. That's like United spending 100 million because it's the way it is. So. Nantes hold on to him for one more game and after that game he did his warm down you know you know, do all the bits you've got to do as a footballer and then he's, his agent booked him a flight to leave straight away on a crappy single prop aeroplane but it turns out the striker had already bought a ticket to fly on a commercial flight to Birmingham and then he would get himself down to Cardiff which isn't that far from Birmingham to be truthful. It's more of a pain in the arse than it is a trek. So, you know, anyway, his agent made him get on this plane. It's a turbo prop, um, single prop, so it's got one of them propeller fans at the front, and that is it. On social media, he was obviously talking about how he was, you know, looking forward to his new club, and he said thank you to all the nonce players and fans and everything. Then suddenly on social media it came for a voice note saying that he was, and I quote, I am scared because this plane is falling to pieces. That's a translation because he's Argentinian, so it's a, it's a translation. So, bear in mind this is the, you know, he's, this is a striker who's already got nine goals in Liga 1 this season. He was the next top scorer after Neymar last season in Liga 1, which is the French league. Um, it was really bad weather and it was the first day of a really bad wintery period we've got going on here in England at the minute and uh, oh, I haven't put music on, sorry and you know the plane was obviously falling to pieces and it fell off of radar 13 kilometres northeast of Alderney which is a channel island 
yeah I think so so obviously air traffic controller have come out and said that the plane had asked to descend to flight level 5000 so it's 5000 feet he was granted 10 minutes later he asked to descend to flight level 2500 feet which was okay after that literally 20 seconds later the plane fell off the radar um, obviously with it being an older plane they haven't got quite specifics so they're currently trying to look for them both oh, they're trying to look for both the pilot and the player and at this moment in time the police have just announced this was just before I was coming to uh, record that the police have now instead of calling this a rescue mission they've now called it a recovery operation which would mean that they reckon both both the pilot and the striker are dead so yeah but uh, they've had to halt the search for the last two nights because of bad weather um, this morning it was halted due to I've got it written down I'm looking at it and I can't find it fog it was halted today for a few hours due to fog and high winds in the English Channel and the latest news is and this is from Guernsey Police's Twitter that they are now searching in the areas of Brahu Casquits, Alderney, the whole of the north coast of the Cherbourg Peninsula and at lunchtime they're going to make a decision whether to continue or not or well, lunchtime is 2 o'clock for them, it's now 25 past 1 so I'll let you know when I know but you know it's got kind of shit really isn't it to a true form um, they've been using five helicopters on one lifeboat to try and look for them. They've, um, they, s ooh, yeah, yeah, let's try the auto pass. They searched a square kilometre, so they've searched 900 square kilometres so far. And they obviously haven't found them, so that's why it's been moved to a recovery mission. Uh, recovery operation, sorry. So, yeah. I've literally got my phone in my hand now and I'm going to be looking for Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, I can't believe farming's got its own esports competition. Guernsey Police. Alright guys, so there was a tweet out from 10.50am this morning and it says the search is ongoing and a decision about continuing will be made after all the search patterns that have been searched this morning. Uh, 120 updates, this was 8 minutes ago exactly. Uh, the island of Burhu has been searched by foot, no trace of aircraft all those on board has been found further information will be released as and when apparently the French are coming to help as well so 
so that's currently the latest on this you know it sucks doesn't it really you know I'm sat here making videos for you guys to watch and somewhere in southern England or northern France or in the middle of the Atlantic or Northern Sea there's two dead bodies in an aeroplane it's kind of shit when you think about it like that really isn't it yeah it really is shit <laughs> oh and I fixed my echo by the way if you can hear this I have changed the fitting because I put it in the wrong way round so if I put the lead in from right to left, uh, no, from left to right, sorry, then it will pull on the housing inside and it wouldn't work. So if I put the lead in from the right hand side to the right hand side, it works. So, um, done. You know, it's been fixed. So, yay, fixed. Hopefully, Pro Mods will be out soon. Because I fancy a trip to the. Uh, fancy a trip to the new Baltics and Rush map. I really really want to move to the Rush map. Shots fired. Boom. So yeah, sucks don't it? Alright, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a chilly section right now and then I will turn off and we'll meet up again uh, in Croatia. Take care. Oh, I believe in my icon as well.
Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed that section and I'm gonna knock this off now and I'll catch up with you when we are in or close to wherever we're going around the table. Where are we going actually? Jadar, Jadar. Oh, sorry guys. I'm going to Jadar. So, I will see you then. See you in a minute guys. I'll open it again. Sorry, I'm definitely going now. Yeah, guys, welcome back to the final part of for today's episode. We are 140 kilometers away from Zadar. Um, we've come through some beautiful Croatian countryside. I'm not going to lie, it's been absolutely beautiful. Flying past Zagreb just now. Um, but yeah, apparently, I've been talking to some of the Promods team. Apparently, there is a very good uh, coastal road the other way. So, what we're going to do is we'll come in the motorway way this time, which is this bit we're on. When we leave, we're going to go that way, no matter if we have to go south. Well, unless it's ridiculously stupid, then we'll probably come this way, but that's the plan anyway. Uh, this is a drop and wait, I think it is. I think it's a drop, wait for another driver uh, from A&A to come pick this up, and I don't know where my next load is. <laughs> I haven't checked, slash, not got one, slash, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know though, that's the problem at the moment. See, the good thing with contract work is sometimes you're so busy it's unreal. And then the next time, yeah, you're really not. So if I don't get a contract job, I'll just um, pull another one or something. But yeah, look at this, absolutely stunning. Shame we couldn't do this in a day, that would have looked sweet. I must be climbing now through the hills. So it's scanning it half an hour to climb. It's just beautiful listening to the little griffin waking our ass off. I think that might be a runaway lane on the right. Um, runaway lane means that the truck hasn't got any brakes left or has lost its brakes, so it's a big gravel pit. It's a tarmac runoff, it's normally uphill and it's a huge deep gravel pit. It takes hours to extricate from, but at least you're not going to kill anybody at the bottom of Villa Hill or something. So I'm all for runaway lanes. Like about seven hours to extra crate from a runaway lane gravel pit apparently. If you remember there's one off at Innsbruck. That as you come through the northern bit of Innsbruck to that petrol station you've got the opportunity to deliver to sometimes. Beautiful, isn't it? I think that might be three lanes just for the trucks to go on the inside and all the cars to pass all the trucks after the climb. That's what I think, anyway. I was going to say, we should be. Yeah, nearly. Thank you. 
So I've seen a no overtaking sign earlier. So logically, I can't overtake. <laughs> Which have fuels to my, the fuel to my fire about the um, third lane back there. New modern take on Abracadabra. I was going to crash then. Alright. Oh, we have to 
brilliant stuff. Yeah, another load done. Tell you what, won't lie, I didn't think I was going to get there at one point. Alright, so that is... 881, this is 882. Um, we came from Betoria to Zara. And it was one thousand two hundred and eighty two kilometers. Filling game trip time of twenty hours and forty minutes. And it was empty pallets. Oh right, that's that page. Dune. So yeah guys, I hope you enjoyed today's well this week's episode, sorry. Um be sure to like, share and subscribe to see more virtual truck driver diaries content. Take care guys. I'm sure the best. Have a good week. And I will see you next week. Take care guys. <laughs>